Welcome to the Money Code Secrets. Now in this episode, we reveal the Talmud's secret of blessing. Now the entire biblical code is based on blessing. The Talmud, Tanit 8b, teaches, a blessing is found only in an object that is hidden from the eye. The power of blessings are found in that which is not seen behind what is readily observable. We invoke blessing by words and certain actions. Deuteronomy 10.12 states, What does the Lord, your God, require of you? As touched on in episode 3 of this podcast, the first word in Deuteronomy 10.12, what, is read ma. The two sacred Jewish texts, the Talmud, Menachot 43b, completely decodes Deuteronomy 10.12 for us by explaining that the word ma can be read as mi'ah, meaning 100. The only thing God requires for us is to say at least 100 thank yous and blessings every day. This is the Jewish secret to success and garnering God's blessing. By living a life immersed in constantly reciting blessings, expressing gratitude, and thanking God, Jews live a blessed life connected to the divine. The sages wrote, Brashat 35a, that a general principle may be derived. Any item from which one derives benefit requires a blessing. One is forbidden to derive benefit from this world without a blessing. Or in other words, we must be thankful for every good thing we receive in life. Now the Talmud acknowledges that astrology does influence a person's destiny and even financial status. However, the Talmud Shabbat 156a teaches that there are no negative astrological influences for those that believe in God, as it is stated in Jeremiah 10.2. Thus said the Lord, Learn not the ways of the nations, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the nations are dismayed at them. The nations will be dismayed by them, but not God's people. This makes supernatural occurrences and great blessings possible and avoids negative astrological predictions about finances. The Talmud teaches that the fate of God's people is not, not governed by celestial forces. Instead, their fate is governed in a relatively direct way by God's blessing. Now, this explains how the Jewish people are able to defy all odds survive and thrive. We can learn about the power of blessing from the story of Abraham. Isaiah 51, 1 and 2 of the Message Bible says, Listen to me, all you who are serious about right living and committed to seeking God. Yes, ponder Abraham your father and Sarah who bore you. Think of it. One solitary man, when I called him, but once I blessed him, he multiplied. In Genesis 15, 3, Abram, his previous name, said to God, You've given me no children. The Talmud, Shabbat 156a, states that Abram looked at his astrological map, and according to the configuration of his constellations, he decided that he was not fit to have a son. In addition, his wife Sarai, her previous name, was past childbearing age. Genesis 15.5 of the NLT states, Then the Lord took Abram outside and said to him, Look up into the sky. Now Rashi on Genesis 15.5, Genesis Rabbah 44.12, decodes this message, explaining that the real meaning of this verse is, Go forth from your astrological speculations that you have seen by the planets that you will not raise a son. Abram, Abram, indeed, may have no son, but Abraham will have a son. Sarai may not bear a child, but Sarah will bear. I will give you other names, and your destiny, astrological map, will be changed. Genesis 17.5 of the NLT states, 
I'm changing your name. It will no longer be Abram. Instead, you will be called Abraham, for you will be the father of many nations. His wife's name, Sarai, was also changed, and then she would experience the miracle of childbirth despite her old age. The Talmud explains that Abraham and Sarah's change of name led to an incredible change of destiny, and Sarah became pregnant long after she was of childbearing age, and she gave birth to Isaac. Abraham became very wealthy, and his wealth increased with time. Names are considered very significant in Judaism. Therefore, parents must choose their child's name wisely. The sages, Midrash Tahuma Hazinizu 7, states that a name influences a person's behavior and destiny. A recent article in the Wall Street Journal entitled, What's in a Name? In Thailand, it may bring a change describes how in Thailand, when faced with a, a patch of bad luck, many are changing their names to create better prospects. Now the Talmud, Rosh Hashanah 16b, reveals to us the secrets of changing one's destiny and bringing about blessing and wealth and even avoiding an early death. It states, five things cancel the terrible fate of man, namely charity, supplication, change of name, change of conduct, and change of place. Charity, as it is written in Proverbs 10.2, and charity delivereth from death. Supplication, as it is written, Psalm 107.6, then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them out of their distresses. Change of name, as it is written, Genesis 17, 15, As for Sarai, thy wife, thou shalt not call her Sarai, but Sarah shall be. That's her name. And it continues, And I will bless her, and moreover I will give thee a son of her. Change of conduct, as it is written, Jonah 3, 10, As God saw their works, and it continues, And God repented of the evil, which he said he would do unto them, and he did it not. Change of place, as it is written, Genesis 12, 1. Now the Lord said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country. And it proceeds, And I will make of thee a great nation. Supplication, change of conduct, and charity are measures that can be taken immediately. Change of name and change of place are more drastic measures that can be taken if needed. However, the correct place and the correct name must be selected. Now, there are several other actions and attitudes that garner God's blessings to become wealthy. Now, the Bible reveals that God is the one who gives one the power to succeed and get wealthy. Deuteronomy 8.18 of the Good News Translation states this, Remember that it is the Lord your God who gives you the power, the very power to become rich. He does this because he is still faithful today to the covenant that he made with your ancestors. A wise person works hard or makes smart investments, but realizes that success or failure is not in their hands, but comes from God's blessing. We must do the work, so God can give us the blessing. Our efforts are the vessel, but it is God who fills the vessel with blessing. This is true in all areas of human endeavor. We get up and do what has to be done, all the while knowing that the success of our actions comes from God's blessing. Being blessed with wealth by a sage is an effective method of garnering God's blessing. The Talmud, Megillah 27b, tells the story of Rabbi Huna, who started out extremely poor, so impoverished that he had to borrow money to purchase 
wine to use for Kiddush on the Sabbath. He used his belt as collateral, so he had to replace it with a belt made out of grass. When Rob, his teacher, saw him dressed like that and found out what he had done, he blessed him as follows. May it be the will of God that you be totally covered in silk. The blessing worked, because Rabbi Huna became very wealthy. In fact, one time, Rabbi Huna, who was extremely short, was lying on a bed. It seems that he was not noticed. And his daughter and daughters-in-law came to the house and threw their expensive silk garments on the bed so that he was literally covered in silk. The Talmud adds that when Ra found out how well his blessing worked, he was upset with Rabbi Huna. He told him that after he had been blessed, he should have replied, and you too should be similarly blessed. The Bible warns that we must be very careful about our words. Words invoke blessings or curses, bringing about wealth or poverty, and life or even death. Proverbs 18.21 of the Good News Translation says, What you say can preserve life or destroy it, so you must accept the consequences of your words. God's word translation of the same verse says the tongue has the power of life and death isaiah 65 16 of the ampc bible says he who invokes a blessing on himself shall do so by saying may the god of truth and fidelity bless me because the former troubles are forgotten the word invoke implies making an earnest request for or to solicit for something and it also means to put in effect or operation, or to implement. Even as God spoke the world into existence, we too can invoke blessings upon ourselves and upon others. When you speak the blessing of God over your life and your finances, you make an earnest request and solicit it, and you put into effect or operation. That is why God told Moses, C.E.V. Numbers 624 to 26, to bless the Israelites with these words. I pray that the Lord will bless and protect you, and that he will show you mercy and great kindness. May the Lord be good to you and give you peace. Then God added, if they ask me to bless them, I will then give them my blessing. Speak blessings over your finances like in Isaiah 65, 16, invoking God's blessings. Daily repeat thank you over your finances, being grateful for what little you have to change things for the better. Now there are several other effective ways to garner God's blessing, which we will discuss in future episodes. So please join us. Subscribe to our podcast and our YouTube